Amigos, como están todos ustedes? Or, el di- Oh my god, gringo, gringo redneck Spanish? Oh my god, is this a character that he plays? El de septiembre de 2017 es un día muy importante. ¿Saben por qué? Porque es el día en el que me enteré de donde viene el sabor de Gatorade. Electric. He speaks better Spanish than me, let's be real. Strict Blue, de la Laguna 69, en Peru. Peru. Viene directamente de esa montaña y su glaciar que se está derritiendo en esa cascada ahí y cae directamente en la Laguna de Gatorade. <laughs> me da sed solo <laughs> verla. <laughs> Así que les recomiendo a todos los fanáticos de la naturaleza y también a los amantes del Gatorade que vengan por acá para disfrutar. Quizás darse un buen chapezón con la boca abierta y tomar de su bebida favorita. Adiós, <laughs> amigos. That was cute. Way better than me. He speaks way better Spanish than me. Way better Spanish than me. Way better Spanish than me. I want to show this video to Connor and see if he could... <laughs> what if I ask him to see if he can replicate this? I want to send it to him and i will be like, Can you say this? Say all of this. Say all of this. This whole video, say it. Say it. Just read it. Read it out loud. <laughs> I had to help him on a span. He had to say Spanish for a thing one day. And he asked me how to pronounce. He was like, can you teach me how to say this? And I'm like, okay. And I taught him how to say a sentence. And he said it for, I think it was for like a Netflix video. And his Spanish came out very well. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, I should tell... Yeah, for a birthday gift, I'm gonna be like... For my birthday... For my birthday, I want you to... Talk to me in Spanish for five minutes. <laughs> Say something nice to me in Spanish for my birthday. For my birthday. Say, say something nice to me in Spanish. For my birthday. <laughs> Can we recommend clips? What do you mean? What kind of clips are you talking about? Read all of Don Quixote. <laughs> it is I, Don Quixote, the man of La Mancha. Dun, 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 dun. And I am a licensed funeral director in What's Washington. his name? Kind of cool. Hi, I'm Victor M. Sweeney, and I'm a... Sweeney? Like Sweeney Todd? What the fuck? Is, Is this a joke? Is this real? Is he real? <laughs> Licensed funeral director and mortician, and this is Mortician Support. Mortician support. This is a question from Saint Severin. Question for morticians. When someone dies, do you remove their poo? Or are we all buried with an unpooed poo? <laughs> that is such a good question. More often than not, your poo is up to you. Sometimes you, you hear the myth that everybody uh, poos themselves before they die. That's not always the case. Sometimes it is. For my purposes, when I get someone back to the funeral home and I'm preparing them, um, if they I mean I figured if if you die and you and you die before you gotta poop, of course you're gonna poop. But if you don't have poop, you're not gonna poop. I have pooed, then I'll clean them up. If it's the case that they start pooing when pressure starts to build up in the abdomen, then I stop what I'm doing, I clean them up. Typically what I'll do is, is I'll actually flush out the bowels with the hose. Because the last thing you wanna have happen is someone to start pooing and then they continue doing it when you can't control it. Question from Lainey. Will my cat eat me when I die? Possibly? Hopefully? <laughs> I think the
What? The, you want to be eaten by Short a Short answer to that is yes. <laughs> I've heard of that happening what? from colleagues of mine. And as we all know, cats being inferior to dogs, they will do anything. They are... Excuse me? Did you just say cats are inferior to dogs? What the fuck? Opportunists. There's a question from Vamp Florence. How do morticians not want to chug the embalming fluid? These look like they taste like Fruit Loops. Oh my god, that well, looks like fucking... I really fucking... love the picture you have. And I noticed you forgot the blue flavor. Embalming fluid is really colorful, but I can assure you... It is not tasty. It smells. It looks like awful. that shit that my color... mom uses to clean the floors. What the fuck? What was it called? What's that thing that 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 Spanish that Hispanic moms use to clean their floors? Please, somebody. Fabuloso! There you go. Fabuloso! My mom uses. It looks like fabuloso. It goes. It is strange, isn't it? One of the reasons that a lot of these fluids are are maybe red or other colors is so that the embalmer knows what they are without having to maybe read the label. But you'll also notice that a couple of them are red. When we push the blood out of the body in arterial embalming, we're pushing out a red fluid. So ideally, we want to put a red fluid back in. So we gain access to an artery. Uh, typically, we'll make an incision maybe in the neck or in the thigh. And then we'll also gain access to a vein. We open the artery. We are going to have an embalming machine, which acts as a pump. And we're going to use this arterial tube, something like this. So this goes down the artery, and then it's going to pump fluid through. Now your vein, we are going to open with either a large forceps or this. Oh my god, it's the same shit they use. It's almost the same shit they use to like, give you a fucking pig line. What the fuck? Called a drain tube. So this goes down the vein. And then when we open it, the blood will pour out the side of our device here. And then we can control how quickly or how slowly we want the blood to leave the body, when we have a, a deceased loved one, they're going to look very, very pale because the blood has stopped circulating. So when we put in the, the red blood, the, the red fluid rather, Ooh. that's actually going to pink them up in some ways and make them look a little bit more alive. This is a yeah, question from expensive. Tiny Rain. Bro, Do caskets are expensive as fuck. Don't ask me how I know that. Do morticians put a bra on you? If so, I would like my rotting corpse to not wear a bra and would like my ghost to be wandering braless with poking nips. <laughs> well, Tiny Rain, I don't know if there's much I can do about poking nips, but we do put bras on if the family requests. And the reality is I've probably put on more bras than I have taken off in my life. Did I answer your question? Poor man. Do nipples get hard when you die or do they unharden? That's a good question. <laughs> question from T. What foundation do funeral directors use to make dead people look alive? Well, that's a good question. All the makeup we use is actually formulated for dead people. So it's made to go on cold skin as opposed to warm skin, like regular How do you makeup. And one of the things we, we try to do is not cake people with makeup, but just do kind of light layers so that way their actual skin How tone do does develop? shine through a little bit. If you've ever gone to a funeral and maybe you've seen someone in the casket who is caked with makeup, they don't really look like themselves. So one of our goals is to tone that down a little bit so they do. Tone Question that down? What if I want to go, what if I want to have full makeup? Heavy eyeliner, heavy eyeshadow, heavy lipstick, heavy blush. No, I want, I want you to just paint my face like I'm at a carnival. Allah, approximately how much does a mortician make? The minimum and the maximum. I really couldn't say what the minimum and maximum are. The average I've read in the country is about $65,000 a year. And talking to my other friends and colleagues, that seems to be a, about the average from my area as well. Opia Dana, can you get half your body cremated and the other half buried? Do morticians do that? What? Asking for a friend. I have never done that, and I've never had anybody ask. 
I guess I could see it happening if you really wanted to. You would have to have a disposition permit that would have cremation and burial. And I guess we'd probably have to sign a waiver to uh, cut someone in half. But maybe the bigger question would be, what half are you gonna cremate and what half do you bury? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a question from That Doodle Bunny. How do morticians handle their jobs without becoming emotional wrecks? That is a good question. Wait a minute, I just noticed. Is that a cup with the Pope on it? What the fuck? <laughs> Morticians handle their jobs without Why? becoming emotional wrecks. That is a good question. Most morticians I know are pretty normal people. There are times where it's emotional. So you do feel it, and there are maybe days you come home where you just feel done and you don't want to work or maybe do what you're doing anymore. But I think the fact that you can actually help people on, on my side of the desk, on this side of things, there are things that you can do <laughs> that maybe nobody else can do. You can provide a chance for a, a mother to see her son one more time. It's those kind of things that keep you going in those hard times. This, that's it, that's uh, all your questions. I sure enjoyed answering them, and I hope you learned something. He's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs>